I feel like in the last year or so, YouTube has kind of felt very artificial, very plastic. It seems like every content creator is kind of trying to follow the same formula, and I am no exception to that. Everyone's video has to be the most, oh my God, shocking, like crazy one upmanship. That way you get more click through rate and more watch time. And I, it just feels very formulaic recently. And so today I got recommended this video. The old YouTube is going viral again by fizzy bang and this is actually a I haven't watched the video yet so I don't know exactly what they're gonna talk about but I have a feeling that this is something that I've wanted to talk about regardless so let's go ahead and give it a watch there is a youtuber named Nico who has tapped into something that YouTube has been missing for a very long time so this dude's got 41.5 thousand subscribers a taste of what YouTube once was okay he has delivered content to an audience that has been longing for the old school way of YouTube videos. And by doing this, he has gone crazy viral. I mean, if we look crazy viral, 41K subs, crazy viral. I'm going to let him cook. Now it's at 41,000 subscribers and one of his videos just ticked over 400,000 views, which. Okay. Let's just be clear here. This video is going viral based on the size of the channel, the channel itself, not sure it's going viral, but I will say in two months having 41k subs assuming that like he didn't have older videos that he privated that's really good especially given that it's literally minecraft content and that is one of the most competitive niches in gaming so huge huge congrats to this nico dude i've never heard of him before but that's that's impressive really impressive yeah I reckon it could still go further. Oh yeah. Because I think there are still many more people who would be really interested in the storytelling content that Nico creates. When I first started watching YouTube, it was 2007 or 2008. And not long after that, I started watching a content creator called the Wings of Redemption. And I also started watching a content creator called Woody's Gamer Tag. Uh, and one of the things that I liked about those guys so much, both very sort of different, but both Call of Duty commentators, both kind of telling stories, Wings maybe a little bit more focused on like the gameplay of Call of Duty, whereas Woody's Gamertag kind of like the dad figure always telling those stories. But I love just watching Call of Duty gameplay because it's a game that I loved and hear people talk about their life experiences. That to me was like the most interesting thing because these are real people that I can relate to because they're playing the same game that I am playing on my other monitor, right? And so that was all I watched when YouTube started. And in fact, my main channel was started for being a Call of Duty commentator and that genre kind of just like evaporated. I don't know what, I guess it got too competitive or I don't really know what happened. The Call of Duty got less popular, I guess. Um, I, I don't really know, but this, this dude is, this dude is cooking. He knows what he's talking about. Let's, let's hear it. People who would be really interested in the storytelling content that Nico creates. Me. But while he is putting authenticity and simplistic content back into the frame of the YouTube platform, there have also been people who have started to copy his videos with some channels even telling the same stories with this that's so cringe that's so cringe i mean look these thumbnails are these unique to the nico guy absolutely not but it's i mean if you're st if you're stealing the same content that's kind of oh that's kind of cringe bro i mean to be fair this dude only has 49 subs so it's it's not like he's actually getting famous off of this but i mean 10k you know same thumbnails and titles which i know it's ironic because i'm using the exact same style as well to make a case study on old school youtube and obviously 100 credit to nico because without him i simply wouldn't be making this video mm -hmm. you see i love to make content about youtuber success stories i'm always doing it for the minecraft community and that's the reason why nico has hit my radar is mm -hmm. because he has minecraft gameplay in his videos i think the truth is that youtube is so massive these days that based on my algorithm even if this kid really blew up i probably would have never known about it without watching this video the truth is i just love talking about these stories because it inspires me to make more content and i know by sharing these stories on my platform i'm going to inspire more people to take notes and perhaps start their own youtube channels i thought it was gonna say he's gonna inspire other people to talk about the same topics which is exactly what i'm doing here with this video so i really care about on this channel is to inspire people so that's why i've taken nico's storytelling style and it's why i'm going to be talking extensively about the style that he's bringing to the platform because it's refreshing. It's refreshing to see this type of content back on the platform. Amen, brother.
amen later in this video i'm gonna go over some examples that have hit my recommendation that i think basically fit exactly what this dude is talking about but i'm seeing this too for my end and it's not gaming related at all and i'm honestly super happy to see it i really am i feel like like i said at the beginning of the video i feel like youtube just got so formulaic in the past a couple of years that breaking free of that just I, i'm I'm kind of glad that we're getting past that meta. I'm going to call it the Mr. Beast meta. I feel like he kind of started it. All love to Mr. Beast though, obviously. He deserves his success and, and 10 times more. Now, I've been doing YouTube for many years. I've changed my style many times over those many years. And I can definitely say that in the beginning, years ago, honestly, it blows my mind how far away it's been since I used to make YouTube videos like this. But it was so simple. I remember just recording Minecraft for like 15 minutes and not even editing it. Or even if I did, it would be in Windows Movie Maker. <sighs> Windows Movie Maker, bro. To be fair, I still use Sony Vegas. I know a lot of people have moved on to like Adobe and Final Cut Pro and all that stuff. I still use Sony Vegas just because I know all the shortcuts and all the keyboard things and I just can edit real quick. But he's right though. It used to be so easy. I would just turn on a camera. I would just talk about stuff for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever. And then just, you know, edit a little bit of it, cut out some of the mistakes and then upload it. And I think if you actually want to be a YouTuber, like you do have to change, right? You do have to change how you do things. You do have to adapt to what is working, what's not working right and and i think that's uh that's all part of the learning process and that's what makes some people good youtubers and some people you know their video quality is just not as good you can kind of tell as a viewer even though you don't know exactly what you're looking for i posted hundreds of videos on my main channel that got less than 200 views and I did that for years because I just didn't realize like, dude, these videos are just not good, but I do miss the simplicity of just making content like that. And if I could go back to doing that, I would. And I hope that this meta takes off because I will definitely do more of it. It was a very simple time. I would just upload content for the sake of it. And yep. I wasn't thinking about retention. I wasn't thinking about click through rates on the thumbnails and trying to hyper optimize every little detail of my dude sometimes i spend as much time making the thumbnail as i do making the video these days and i'm like micromanaging little pixels making the shadow on the text slightly bigger slightly small oh is this look oh, how is this look and i'm like dude at some point i'm just like people aren't even going to notice the changes that i'm making i'm literally just wasting time and then i finish the thumbnail and i just do it but like you you like obsess over those small things because you think that like oh that's just adding that extra little sparkle to the thumbnail is gonna make it make the click-through rate just slightly better and that's gonna get the algorithm algorithm to push it out like it gets obsessive my content i just made videos and mm -hmm. it was really really fun mm -hmm. but that all disappeared that all faded away when youtube started to become this platform where you needed to optimize. Everything was being commercialized. Advertisers wanted content to be more ad friendly yep. and also highly retentive. They wanted to. I think things sort of started to change around 2016, 2017. There was a big adpocalypse around the Leafy is Here era. And I think things really changed after that. And I think that's kind of when we saw the birth of the sort of Mr. Beast, like constant overhype shock value genre where it's family friendly. There's no cursing, but it's just like, oh my God, I gave this stranger 50 grand. Oh my God, I gave someone a house. Oh my bro, I gave away 10 cars. Like that's where I think that's all started. And the sort of old YouTube just kind of died away. And it makes sense because the more ad revenue that's coming in, the more people are willing to spend time making the, making the content as good as possible. And then you get competition in the marketplace and competition is good for the consumer, the viewer, right? Which is in this case. And I think overall, Overall, there is way better content on YouTube now than there was 10 years ago, but I still miss that authenticity. There's still a part of me that just, that's what I, I do want some of that, you know, and I don't get reckoned, I don't get recommended it enough on my homepage, but lately, uh, like we're going to talk about in a minute, I've been, I've seen a couple to make sure that content just captured people's attention for long periods of time so that viewers would end up seeing more ads. That's mm -hmm. how YouTube works. And in a way it still works like that and that's why i'm shocked that his video is only eight minutes and 58 seconds and me reacting to this is going to be a much longer video right and i've definitely noticed that my content on my main channel that ends up being a little bit longer does tend to do better so it's kind of disappointing because it's another just thing you have to think about like oh is this video can i make this video long enough to make it good you know and honestly 
This mentality of trying to optimize every little detail of my content and make sure that every frame is edited perfectly mm -hmm. so that people don't click off my video and so I can get the highest retention possible, mm -hmm. it was really exhausting. I couldn't stand it, honestly. And that's why seven months ago, I just stopped making videos. I just decided that I couldn't do this anymore because every time I would come up with a video idea that I was passionate about, there would be this little part of me that is sort of the manifestation of the current era of YouTube just in my head going, you didn't get the retention properly. You're not going to get many clicks on this video. The thumbnail and the title are bad. The music choices are bad. The transitions, the frames are not edited perfectly. And it's true. It's true. that And, and I'm not going to sit here and say like YouTube is a hard job, right? Because I mean, I've worked a bunch of real jobs and I know, you know, honestly, the most recent video on this channel talks about that. But it is scary to think about like your livelihood rides on other people finding your content interesting and they can just stop finding it interesting. And if you post a couple of videos in a row that don't really perform as well as you think they will, then you start to get really paranoid. Like, oh my God, like, are, is my content not good? Like, have I fallen off? Like, is this all going to go to zero? Like, it, these are things that a lot of YouTubers think about that I think maybe the viewers don't, don't realize. You just get in your head. You yep. You can't escape it. And yep. it made me throw away really good videos, videos I was passionate about just because I thought the YouTube algorithm wouldn't give me a chance. Yep. And it's really sad to think about it. And I wonder how many other people who started YouTube who go through that phase of mm -hmm. not knowing what to do because they think that what they want to do is not what YouTube wants and it's not what people want to watch. It's a very, very difficult thing to break through. Well, the truth is that that's kind of true, right? I think, you know, if people aren't watching your content, then objectively, you know, like, that's not what people want to see, right? And maybe there is somebody out there for that type of content. And that's the sort of job of the YouTube algorithm is to find to connect people with content that they would like, right? But you know, with millions and millions of videos being uploaded every single day, it's impossible for every creator to be seen by everyone who might like them, right? Especially if they've only made a handful of videos, which is why a lot of YouTubers have to make hundreds of videos before they really like before the algorithm hits that audience for them. And then it's like, okay, now we've got, we've kind of got our foot in the door. Right. But I mean, again, if you make hundreds of videos and nobody's watching any of them, then I do think that that is evidence that what you're making is not what people want to watch. So as much as I would love for it to be the case that people want to go back to the original way that YouTube once was, I think that you can make the argument that there's just better stuff to watch on YouTube now, right? Like it, there just is, even if I miss the way that it used to be. But the reason why I'm back making videos is because I was up at three in the morning one night and I had a terrible sleep schedule. So that's why I was just scrolling through YouTube, just doom scrolling my way through content. And magically on my feed, I found one of Nico's videos and I looked at it and I just stared at the thumbnail and the title and how many views it had. Cause you could see that on the homepage. It had a lot of views already. It was, it was really surprising. And here's the, the most surprising part about this is that if you compare this to like the current YouTube meta, this does kind of break every rule in the book, right? It's a very generic thumbnail that doesn't, there's nothing super catchy about this thumbnail. The saturation isn't pulled all the way up. Like there's no red arrows and big red circles and oh, a reaction face, right? And also uh, it's a bit of a shorter video and the there's no, there's no keywords in the title or anything like that, right? Like this kind of breaks all of those rules. The only exception being that it is a Minecraft video. So that is massively appealing. But like, besides that, this video by all metrics shouldn't do well, but uh, clearly it is. And that's great. You see a video with minimal editing and yep. minimal style title and thumbnail do mm -hmm. so well. It completely shattered my worldview of how content is meant to be on the platform. For years, I spent so long optimizing and making sure that the viewer was more like a metric that I was trying to boost. And I was not treating the viewer as a human being who wanted to be entertained and wanted to receive value from the content that I created. That's kind of the purpose of me making this second channel is because I wanted to kind of get back to just posting about stuff that I care about outside of what my main channel is, right? You get into your head about that algorithm where it's like, okay, if I post content about other things on that channel, 
then those videos aren't going to do as well as my other content and then you feel bad about it right so i basically created this second channel as a project to be like okay i don't really care how bad these videos do i'm just going to post whatever i want because like this guy is saying i just missed that old school feeling and i am glad that he you know i don't know this dude i've never watched his videos before but i'm glad he's back to making content because it sounds like he and i have kind of gone through that same psychological like loop of being like oh my god now i just rewinded i want to touch on this point for just a second and I was not treating the viewer as a human being who wanted to be entertained and wanted to receive value from the content that I created. I agree, but I also disagree. How do you know what a viewer wants? Well, one thing is that they will comment on your video saying, hey, can you make a video about this? Or I'd love to hear you talk about that, right? And that's great. But a lot of times what I've found is that when I make videos that people ask me for, they don't necessarily do that well. And that's fine, right? If it, you know, if there's a certain little niche that finds value in that video, then amazing, right? But I do think that views as a metric give you kind of a general sense of what do people actually want, right? Because a lot of times, and I think famously Steve Jobs said this, people don't really know what they want, right? Before the car was invented, if you asked them what they wanted, they would say a faster horse, right? But of course, you know, the car is much better. And so in one way, I agree with him. But also, if this commentary style video doesn't get a lot of views, then that is kind of the audience at large, kind of collectively saying we don't really care about this. And also, uh, just to play a little defense here, I also think that viewers don't really care about the YouTuber, right? The content creator. And, and he's saying here that, you know, he's not treating the viewers as humans. And truthfully, I don't think viewers really treat YouTubers as people either right and that's not to say like that's a bad thing i mean most people have never met the youtubers that they watch right it's kind of just their form of entertainment and as much as people feel like in their gut like oh yeah i do i do really care about pewdiepie or oh i do really care about markiplier or i do really care about mr beast it's like maybe but I'm not that convinced and maybe I'm just a little bit cynical here right so I think it kind of goes both ways where he's thinking oh he's not treating his viewers like actual people but I also think that the viewers don't really treat the youtubers like people either and the evidence for that is that sometimes youtubers get hate comments on the videos and it's like you you wouldn't say that if we were at a bar like I'm I typically get along with a lot of people like I feel like if we met in real life like it'd be it'd be pretty chill right so but you know we're anonymous on the internet and, and people act a little bit crazy when that's the case and it was after seeing how successful Nico was that it made me look into YouTube more deeply. Clearly, the algorithm had figured out perfectly that this was the video I needed to see at that exact moment. And I know that this isn't the first channel to do this type of content. I remember watching a YouTube channel named Flow State. Wow. It was a while ago that I saw his channel on my feed as well. And he was in the same space of combining storytelling with Minecraft gameplay. You know, what's wild to me is that this video here, it says 50 plus mods that enhance vanilla Minecraft part two that has half a million views, but the videos that have even more views here are nobody cares 1.3 million views. So basic YouTube logic would say that this video would do better because not only would it appeal to Minecraft players, but also it's something people are searching for, right? They're searching for Minecraft mods. Nobody's searching for a video. Nobody cares. And so just right out of the gates, there would be more people that you would think would stumble across this video. And also it's 10 minutes long. This video is five. So in theory, the watch time, like the total watch time for this video, you would think would be much higher as well. And so again, here we see another instance that this dude is sharing where this content that you would expect to do worse is actually doing significantly better. And I love to see that. And there were some very relaxing videos on his channel and it went viral as well. Is that the Ethereum logo? I just realized it's real close. It's real. It's real close. I was going to say, wouldn't it be funny if he just sold his channel to like some crypto pump and dump dude? You see, this content is like a well-needed break from all the noise on the platform. Mm -hmm. By noise, I mean all the content that just feels the same. In the Minecraft community especially, I could find thousands of videos that all follow the same format, with the same editing style, and in all honesty, <laughs> the same obnoxious, overhyped personality. Thank you, bro. That's what I'm saying. It's the formula. It's like YouTube has been solved. Like people figured it out. Like that is the meta. And that's just what, and of course people are going to do that. Cause that's like that. They, again, they pay the bills from the viewership. So like you have to do what works and it just sucks when the entire platform kind of feels homogenized. And I can say that it is not exclusive to Minecraft. That is absolutely for sure. Didn't mean to make this a diss on Minecraft YouTubers, but honestly, 
a lot of Minecraft videos are so overly energetic for mm -hmm. the sake of appealing to the younger audiences. And what's going on, guys? Today we're going to be. Yeah, this is that sort of thing. Yeah, it's obnoxious. I much rather the slowed down style of content, and I'm glad it's becoming a trend to be nostalgic and to have a more toned down, genuine personality. I'm especially glad that the algorithm for all the drama and the negative attention that it gets has started to care about storytelling more than retention. The truth is that the algorithm doesn't care about storytelling over retention. The truth is that maybe it's just gotten a little bit better at, at connecting the audience that wants to see that type of content with that type of content, right? That's really all, all it comes down to because I think the algorithm has not changed at all. I think the algorithm still cares about retention time and watch time and click through rate and all that stuff. I think all that still matters just as much now as it did a year ago. The only difference is maybe um, people are just so they're, they're just so overwhelmed. They're kind of tone deaf now to like, oh, look, this guy gave away another hundred thousand dollars. Like but people have, we've seen it a million times. So kind of what becomes unique now is something that's more mundane. It could just be the case that uh, this dude and myself are just getting older. And I think that he kind of touched on this with the overly energetic kids content. I think that's, you know, he hit the nail right on the head, right? And a few weeks ago, I visited my nephews and they're, I think 12 and eight and they love Mr. Beast, right? And so for them, they're not watching this style of content. I can guarantee you that, right? So it could also be the case that like, maybe, yes, maybe some people are straying away from that overly hyped content and looking for mundane, mellow things, but it also could just be the case that this guy, myself and others uh, that grew up with YouTube, now that we're a little bit older, maybe now we're starting to be like, okay, actually I'm not in the mood for a Mr. Beast video. I kind of just want to chill, right? And algorithm is maybe starting to finally figure that out like oh you know what maybe we we should start recommending this stuff because they're watching it longer right it's the same metrics it's just applied to a different style of content now i said before that there are other youtubers using nico's exact style and while that does bring into question their originality it's also a really good thing that more of this content is being made. I mean, the truth is that everyone is going to copy what is successful and there really isn't anything original on YouTube at all. And you know, 10 years ago, people said the same thing, right? In 2014, oh, like nobody's doing anything original anymore. Everyone's just copying one another. It's like, yeah, I mean, that's kind of always been the case, right? People have always retold the same stories with different twists and different characters. And that, you know, that's always gonna be the case, right? Now, there's some people that do it way better than others and they incorporate their own style to it right like a dream kind of exploded when he first came out on the scene not for anything super special i mean he was just playing minecraft but because he was so good at it and the type of content and i'm not going to get into all that but what i'm trying to say is everyone's going to copy everyone all the time and that should never be really seen as a bad thing unless it is literally like stealing the exact thumbnail and not doing any work and stealing the exact footage and not doing any work like if you're doing that then sure scumbag right but copying a style or genre and putting in your own twist that is literally what youtube has been about since day one and if you don't realize that you probably haven't been paying attention or maybe you're new here and if so welcome It'd be better if people tried to add something to the style instead of pretending like they weren't copying nico to begin with yeah see this person's an idiot right and that's why they only got one thumbs up because like nobody actually believes this this person's just salty but more old school youtube videos is, is what this platform needs. It's what people have honestly deserved after years of mind numbing content that failed to bring value to the viewers. What the platform needs is more content of what people want to watch. And I don't think people, I don't think the platform necessarily needs old school content unless there's a lot of people that want to watch old school content. And if that is the case, then the people who start making that content are going to get pushed through the algorithm. And then other people are going to see that it does well, and then they're going to do the same thing. And that's how we will basically, the algorithm will kind of solve itself and figure itself out. And I think that's a really Really good thing and I'm, I'm glad to see that it could possibly be going in that direction but also he's talking about this Nico dude he's got 40k subs I don't think that that is a good enough example to say that the whole algorithm is moving in that direction definitely not but the fact that it is proof that sometimes it can work still is very good and if it happens more often I'm happy to hear it in just the past year the algorithm has improved to a point where traditional content can break through to the home page you don't have to feel so boxed in as a YouTuber. You can try different things as long as you have a genuine personality and a genuine style of content. And honestly, I don't know if this video that I'm making right now will actually do well, but knowing that the algorithm is more likely to give me a chance is what's inspiring me to make this video. Let's actually find out. This video was posted 11 days ago. It has 70,000 views and it did better than his video from 
two weeks ago but it didn't do as well as this one but it did more than this one not as good as this one. Oh well these are nine months old so it's actually you can't really compare them but i mean for 11 days to have more views than a dream video from seven months ago this video from a year ago i think I think he's right. I think this video is doing better than some of his other content that is more YouTube meta, shall we say. So if you've always wanted to make YouTube videos, now is the perfect time to do it. Nico is just one success story, and I'm sure there'll be many more now that all this hype around flashy editing and over-the-top personalities has started to die down. I don't know if the hype around it has died down, but I do think people are a little bit sick of it, and I think that maybe there's a little too much of it, and only the strongest will survive, right? And that's the case for everything. So for example, Mr. Beast is not going to go anywhere, even if he keeps doing the same type of content, the same over-the-top style of content, I think he will still remain, you know, as successful as always but I guess what this guy is trying to say is that you shouldn't feel like you need to be that in order to make YouTube videos and I 100% agree if you want to make YouTube videos start doing it just start it's always the the best time to start is now just do it I'm personally still going to put 110% into every video I make uh, I've always been doing that on this channel and it's going to be hard for me to let go of the style that I've created especially since I'm getting good at editing these videos now but I'm going to try and be more human in my videos. I'm not going to be this person who's just, you know, stiffly reading out scripts and then using flashy editing to cover it up. I think it's more important now than ever that I try to be genuine. And I feel like I've taken sort of a hybrid approach. Usually like for my main channel videos, I will have a topic that I'm going to do the video on and then I'll have bullet points of all the things that I want to discuss. And then the first like couple of minutes of the video, I will try to make very catching, but I never read off a script. I literally have never read off a script unless it was for like a sponsor or something like that. I don't script any videos because I just can't do it. I like to be on the camera and if I'm on camera, then, and if I'm sitting here and I'm reading something and you're going to know that if I'm like, if I'm going like this, like, oh, he's obviously reading a script and like, that just doesn't feel right. So I do like to be more authentic with what I'm saying. Like, this is just my actual train of thought and there's pros and cons to that, right? Because sometimes I ramble. And and that's bad for watch time because people click away but sometimes people do appreciate the the genuine nature of it and so that's it's good to see that maybe more people are going in that direction too and i have been doing that for as long as i can remember on this channel i know that maybe that sounds like me just talking myself up but i feel like i could be more genuine than i have been in the past so that's all i wanted to say and if you enjoyed this video let me know in the comments maybe i'll make more content like this but who knows and maybe take a chance on some of my other videos if you're new to the channel they might be very different from the one you just watched but hey you might like my style that i have on the channel so other than that thank you so much for watching now i dropped a thumbs up on this video let's see what people have to say in the comments because i'm interested i'm extremely glad that people are picking up again on the old style of videos i'm tired of thumbnails with 10x saturation and videos with 100 sound effects per second memes non-stop text flying all over the screen and and this is exactly right it's not necessarily that people want the old style of youtube i think they're just they're just brain their brain is so fried from the just the constant stimulation of like the oh my god like everything is shocking right this guy says minecraft is the perfect look into this much larger issue both on youtube and across every content sharing platform people used to be passionate about the content they were making not the potential revenue they could get from it videos had genuine personality and you really felt like you were sitting with a real person watching old YouTube there was so much authenticity when people created for the sake of creation I know we'll probably never go back to that with the mass monetization and corporatization of the internet but God do I miss it and this is again a hundred percent true like I said earlier I started watching uh, wings of redemption Woody's gamer tag back when I was a kid back when I was in middle school and they are the reason that I'm sitting in front of this camera right now like literally I would not be doing this if it weren't for them and it's because I connected with those people so genuinely uh over that original style of content and this person's right it's never going to go back fully but if more people are looking for this type of content it will do better and more people will start to make more of it and I'm very happy to hear that now earlier in the video I said that there were some examples that I have of content creators that I've recently stumbled upon that I feel fall in this same demographic and a few months ago I went through a little bit of a binge where I was watching some videos about collecting physical media collecting you know blu-rays DVDs stuff like that and I don't do that sort of thing I'm not a movie guy right but for whatever reason it fascinated me and YouTube recommended me this video uh why I collect physical media a method to my madness it's got 13,000 views from nine months ago 
and that is significantly more views than the rest of this dude's channel has and he has 593 subscribers but i watched this entire 18 minute video there's literally no editing it's just this dude that i have never heard of before he's just talking about his collecting of dvds vhs tapes movies things like that and even though i don't i i literally do not participate in the same hobby as this gentleman i watched the entire video because he was so passionate about what he's talking about why he collects physical media i can't believe i didn't i didn't even like that even though i did drop a uh, a comment here i said i'm gonna be real with you i enjoyed hearing somebody just speak passionately about something they love I don't even collect movies or anything, but I watched the whole thing. I wanted to make sure this guy knew that I actually genuinely appreciated what he was posting here because I just miss connecting with a passionate person about the things that they like to talk about. Here's another example that I came across just a couple of weeks ago. This dude's name is Malcolm Geit, and he's actually a poet, 56,000 subscribers. The other day, this video you could see absolutely blew up. It absolutely blew up for the rest of the channel size, right? 350,000 views in three weeks his second highest was from two years ago is 132,000. And I think that this video got more popular because of this video. Uh, this one's 11 months ago, right? 78 K. So most of his videos, if we look latest, like some of them don't really have that many views, but this video for whatever reason was pushed out in the YouTube algorithm. And it's literally just this old English dude with a great accent for 13 and a half minutes. He lights up a pipe and he reads a little bit of uh, i think the hobbit right or maybe his fellowship of the ring there's no fancy editing here there's no like there's nothing crazy he's got like crumbs on his shirt right like there's, there's just nothing uh traditionally youtube about this video and yet it has clearly gotten pushed through the youtube algorithm over the past couple of weeks and look there's even comments about it right i have no idea why youtube recommended this to me but it was exactly what i needed at the end of a very busy day thank you it doesn't happen often but once in a while the algorithm gets it right and recommends something wonderful. This comment says, this man looks and acts like he could have been imagined by Tolkien. I mean that as a compliment, no idea how YouTube brought me here, but here we are. And so basically everyone arrived at this video in the same way. It was the YouTube algorithm pushing it. And why did the YouTube algorithm push this video out there? Was it magic? No. Was it luck? Maybe a little bit. The truth is that people just want to see someone passionately talk about something without all the flashiness without all the craziness and i've watched a ton of this guy's videos since then because it's just so nice to see and i think probably the most popular example of this is sam sulik right this dude absolutely blew up i think about a year ago he started posting videos let's see one year ago is when he first started posting and he posts every single day and there's basically no editing here he is literally a bodybuilder he's in college as far as i know i've watched some of his videos and look the thumbnails aren't highly edited i think they are pretty flashy just because he's actually jacked and so it's kind of shocking to see someone that strong but at the end of the day like they're an hour long hour and a half long like these videos get insane amounts of watch time even though he's just lifting weights grocery shopping like there's nothing here that would be traditionally uh, successful on YouTube and yet 3.1 million subscribers absolutely insane the amount this channel has blown up over the past year and like this guy said in his video I think people just kind of miss the the way YouTube used to be and I can only hope that over the next couple of years we can kind of get back to that and my pledge is that I will try to continue to post more videos on this channel of things that I just want to talk about whether it does well or not I'm gonna try my best to just post content guys if you enjoyed this video first of all make sure you go down to the description and go ahead and drop a thumbs up on fizzy bangers uh youtube video the original video will be linked in the description probably the pinned comment as well if you want to see more of his minecraft content of course go ahead and subscribe to him while you're down there consider dropping a thumbs up on this video it really helps out my channel a ton it'll help get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other people might see it and also if you want to see more videos from me subscribe to my channel click the bell down below with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omni i will talk to you guys again soon peace